Hey, this is Tristan. This is the first episode of the Cabbage series, so it is finally happening. So you're watching this channel because you might want to build a cabin, as I'm about to do. Uh, well, you definitely need to look into those four reasons that might prevent you from being able to even be allowed to build a cabin. So number one is going to be the city limits restriction. So are you within city limits? So if you Google the name of a town, Google will usually outline around it, showing you really the edges of a town. And this should help you figure out where you stand, where is your property located. So let's assume that you are within city limits. The first step is going to be to research the city restriction that might exist. So they will most likely have zoning restriction limiting you on the amount of buildings that you can have on the plot of land or next to your house. Uh, for short-term rental, they will most likely also have specific rules about it, maybe the number of days you can rent a month. So definitely look for city ordinances that might have been published, and those will help you navigate the do's and don'ts as far as uh, city restriction. The best way is probably still to pick up the phone, call your city, and ask them all those questions about what restriction they might have. That's really where you will get the best answers from. And you know, if people don't know, just get transferred to the right person in the city and they will help you. Number two is county ordinances and restrictions. So if you're not within city limits, you will have to see the rules that might exist at um, a county level. So counties usually will be a little bit more relaxed than cities, but they might still have some zoning and ordinances rules that you will have to look for. So I would start by an online research, probably typing the name of the county that your property is in, and maybe you know type that plus restriction or short-term rental restriction. And again, if you're not satisfied with your findings and with the results, um, the best way is still to pick up the phone, call the right person at the county level, and um, ask them to give you answers. So number three is the deed restriction. So now that you have a good understanding of city and county rules, you need to look into specific rules that might apply specifically to your land. So the deed that was created to pass the ownership from the seller to the buyer also should have a list of all sorts of deed restriction that have been created over time and passed on as you know on as the property got sold those rules could be a lot of things so here is an example where i'm showing you like one that i pulled from the internet it could be anything from no mobile home or trailer no farm animal you have to build a minimum square Sa um, square footage size of a house, you have like different setbacks. So in that case, you will have to perform a research through the register of deeds to find yours and, and find your potential restriction. So you should also just have a copy of your deeds from when you closed uh, and when you bought the property. So if you're not, if you don't have it, you might be able to pull it online, as I said, or you might have to go in person um, and, and pull it that way. So once you locate it, make sure to carefully read through and pay attention as sometimes they will reference older deeds which might have restrictions that were not carried on. Meaning that, I mean, those restrictions still exist, but they might have not been copied into your deed. So be very careful of this. Number four is HOA slash POA rules. The last thing to check and probably the most important one is to know if you're within an HOA, POA, also known as homeowners association and property owner association. So you should definitely know if you're within one because uh, you're probably paying fees for it if that's the case. So check with the HOA directly concerning rules they might have. So you can contact them. Usually they'll have a ball. They'll have people you can talk to and ask them for a copy of their covenant and restriction. You might want to talk to them directly to confirm your findings or if you have any questions. Um, the challenge though with HOA is that the rule can change over time. So that means that if you know today they say that short-term rentals are good to go, um, but a few owners start to complain about it and decide to come up together and decide that they want to prohibit them, this might happen. So be very, very careful. So in my case, I had done research before I even bought this place because I wanted to be outside of city limits. I wanted to be in an unrestricted part of the county and I did not want to be into any sort of HOA, POA. So I have close to no rules applying to me, uh, which kind of let me do what I want. Um, so let me know below if you have any questions um, as you absolutely want to do your homework before even thinking about building anything. So please sure to check out the, the next episode as I have a lot coming up soon 
as I'm making some uh, decent progress, I'm still having to apply for my uh, building permit. But yeah, I'm making a lot of progress. I've been shooting a lot of videos, so stuff is coming up. So make sure to like, yeah, check the next video.